Hey everyone, and welcome back to our modded playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. Today we will be sending our Kerbals to the moon to gather some more science points, which are sorely needed right now. We still have a long way to go before unlocking even half of the tech tree, so the faster we get that science, the better. My goal for this mission was to accumulate enough science points to unlock some of the early parts used to build space stations, as well as unlocking the mobile science lab. This will be key to the future plans of our growing space agency. I want to eventually launch a space station into the orbit around the moon. Um, it would utilize a small shuttle to send um, either kerbals or probes down to the surface of the moon to collect science data for processing back at the lab. I've also got a contract to put a station in orbit around the moon as well, so this would allow us to kill two birds with one stone basically. Uh, when the technology is unlocked, I want to also put a ScanSat into Moon Orbit that has the ability to scan the surface for high value re resource deposits. Uh, the goal of that would be eventually um, establishing a long term mining base, which will allow us to get quite a bit of funds if we can find an efficient and relatively easy way of shipping all of that ore back to Kerbin. Now, if this was a normal game of KSP, you would probably consider this rocket to be a bit overkill for going to the moon. Uh, but the USI mods require us to take a full suite of life support systems to keep our Kerbals alive and happy. And those things take up space and weight. It adds a new layer of difficulty to the game that I really enjoy, and it will force you to do a lot of prior planning before launching any missions that would take more than just a couple of weeks to complete. The craft is safely nestled inside the fairing, uh, but we will talk more on that later. Right now I want to focus on the launch vessel itself. We were limited in our choice of rocket engines, as we had not researched any heavier engines in the tech tree yet. The science points from our previous mission we used to unlock some more life support and storage systems, which left us a bit lacking in the uh, heavy lifting department, so to speak. I went with a central core of four swivel engines and two outer boosters that each held a cluster of four reliant engines. The thrust to weight ratio of the rocket is not the best, however the small engines don't burn through the fuel as fast so we can keep them burning for longer. The two outer boosters are also feeding fuel into the central stack, so when the boosters are jettisoned it will leave the central core still fully fueled. Unfortunately the boosters and central core of this rocket are not reusable. However, this is something that I want to change with these missions in the long run once we have a bit more tech unlocked. The ascent wasn't the fastest, uh, but the rocket was very, very stable, and no doubt our Kerbals were very thankful for the smooth ride. The main engines are cut off for a coast towards an apoapsis of 100km. The second stage engine finishes the work and the fairings are deployed to reveal our main vessel. Not counting the second stage, uh, this craft weighs 15 tons when fully fueled, and it has around 1700 meters a second of delta V. It is designed for two kerbals. It has built-in life support systems, greenhouses, recyclers, and habitation modules. Along with the usual suites of scientific equipment and command systems, it will be adequate enough to support our kerbals for around 29 days, which will be more than enough time to complete this mission. With the ship in orbit, the life support systems were engaged, recyclers activated and greenhouses prepped. Once all systems were confirmed working, Bob was sent on several EVAs to reset the Science Junior and Mystery Goo units as we took measurements from biomes high above Kerbin. All of the science data is kept in a storage unit that we will be bringing back to Kerbin at the conclusion of this mission. Once we had all of the science data collected, it was time to plot a maneuver node to give us an encounter with the moon. After an 840 meter per second burn, we were on our way, and a small correction burn was planned to give us an appropriate encounter at the correct inclination. Now, even with the addition of the USI life support mods, a mission to the moon is not a massive hurdle. However, it is very good practice, as things will become a lot more complicated when we venture out to further targets. There are several things that must be factored in. We need to consider habitation time for one thing. A standard command module or lander can only provide seven and a bit days of hab time for one Kerbal. 
Hap time can be extended by fitting certain parts. Any part that increases the crew capacity of the vessel will increase the hap time as well. There are also certain parts that either directly increase hap time or provide some sort of modifier that extends the habitation of the craft overall. Supplies are another thing to consider. Kerbals need supplies to stay happy, I mean everyone's gotta eat, right? Supplies can be provided by several modules of varying sizes and they can also be extended by the use of uh, hydroponic greenhouses and recyclers. Um, both of which are very, very good at extending the potential lifetime of the mission, so to speak, especially when you're building large and complicated craft. Uh, a third factor to um, consider is homesickness. Um, homesickness affects how long Kerbals can be away from their home before they become un unhappy. Uh, if a Kerbal becomes too unhappy, they are basically turned into a tourist version of themselves and become useless. Um, if that happens when you're quite far away, say Jewel for instance, you're gonna find yourself in quite a spot of bother. The amount of time your Kerbal has before they become homesick is called home time. Now home time never resets of its own accord and starts counting down from the moment of launch. However, it is increased by the highest amount of habitation ever experienced by the Kerbal. Home time can be reset if there is a working um, colonization module present on the craft, but that is a more complicated topic for another day. Um, there's only really so much I can talk about this before it begins to give me a headache anyway. Now back to the mission. With our mid-course adjustment complete, it was time to set up a maneuver node at the moon periapsis for our orbital insertion burn. With that done, it was a simple case of coasting along on our way, and making the occasional pause to have Bob do an EVA to reset our science units again. Though they aren't worth a particularly huge amount of science points, all of these EVA reports and other samples will add up to a nice amount at the end of the mission. Uh, sadly, our burn was due on the dark side of the moon, so apologies for the poor visibility here, but we were able to enter a stable orbit and begin conducting the first of our true lunar science experiments with our Kerbals. Um, I dare say by the end of this, Bob will have truly earned his paycheck with all of these EVAs he's having to do. Poor guy. With each um, completed experiment, the data is put into storage unit so that all available experiments can of course be reset. Now I used the biome overlay provided by the data from our scan satellite to select a suitable landing area. My aim was to land within easy reach of three biomes to maximise the amount of science we could collect before heading back to Kerbin. The landing profile was a direct descent and ascent, meaning the same engine would be used for the entirety of the mission, unlike the sort of thing you saw with say the Apollo program where you had a separate engine for descent and then reascent back into orbit. Personally I think the uh, details provided by the scansats um, add a lovely new level of immersion to the game and allows you to be far more selective when it comes to landing zones. Eventually, scansat maps can be used to show the mineral deposits once the right parts are unlocked, and we will definitely utilize that feature in the future. There's also a very useful zoom feature for scansat maps. It brings up a separate display where you can adjust the zoom of the map and the location of the overlay itself. This can be really good for planning highly accurate landings as the projection of your craft's trajectory also takes into account the rotation of the body you're landing on. That's something that the stock game actually fails to do. Once I was happy with the landing zone, it was time to begin our landing maneuvers. We had a decent amount of delta V left on the craft, uh, but I still wanted to be careful so that we could afford to do a few biome hops once we were down. There were quite a few small craters in the area and I didn't want to land the craft on an inclined surface, so I did a few small burns with the remaining fuel in the second stage before rejecting it and beginning our final descent. As you can see, we made a smooth landing on a relatively flat area of the moon's surface. Unfortunately, the game crashed a few moments after this, but luckily I had quick saved after landing. Technical glitches aside, it was time to begin collecting all of that juicy science data. Bob, time to get out there again. We have thermometers, barometers, material bays, EVA reports, surface samples, the whole lot. And it's going to keep uh, poor Bob busy for quite a while. 
he did manage to find some spare time to at least plant a flag, and so did Jebediah, who was starting to develop a bit of cabin fever being stuck in that cockpit for the whole mission so far. Hopefully all of the experience gained from this mission will allow Jeb and Bob to level up, making them more efficient at their jobs. With all of the data collected, it was time to do a quick hop to the next biome to repeat the process all over again. I, uh, I almost buggered up the landing actually, not quite realising just how inclined the surface was, but luckily I was able to stop the craft from tipping over. Bob was once again sent out to gather science data and to survey the craft to make sure that there wasn't any damage. Once that was complete, it was time to head home. I was tempted to hop to a third biome, but I was not comfortable with the amount of remaining fuel and didn't want to leave our Kerbal stranded. After establishing a rough orbit of around 10 kilometers, um, it was time to set up a maneuver node for an encounter with Kerbin. Uh, to save fuel, we will drop our Kerbin periapsis into the mid-atmosphere, which will remove the need for any orbital burns. After igniting our engine for the last time, it was time to coast back to Kerbin and prepare for re-entry. As we approached the atmosphere, it was time to retract our antenna and detach the third rocket stage, leaving the command modules, storage bays and a few cupolas to brave the fires of Kerbin re-entry. I was afraid of um, actually losing the cupolas to heat damage, but thankfully the craft um, in a spin kept anything from overheating to the point of destruction. I would have installed the mod that gives you better re-entry particles physics, uh, but it was causing some sort of graphical issue with another mod. Um, I'm still trying to work that out, so hopefully I can have that installed for a later video. After a relatively smooth re-entry, it was time to pop the chutes. Uh, sadly, this was all done again on the night side of the planet, so apologise for the pretty crappy visuals. Uh, we did make a soft splashdown in the oceans though, and um, now it's time to reap our rewards. And there we go, not a bad haul overall, uh, 779k in funds and just over 960 science points, and our Kerbals have leveled up too. Uh, also global warming appears to have uh, flooded the Kerbal Space Center, but hopping into the uh, vehicle assembly building will fix that. With our science points it's time to unlock some heavier rockets and the Nerve nuclear engines, which will come in handy in the near future. We will also unlock some more research parts, um, notably the mobile science lab of course, and we will unlock some other components that will in general allow us to build larger and more efficient craft. With that completed it is time to bring this episode to a close. Next time we will be working on building a mobile science station and sending our Kerbals to Minmus as well to gather even more science points. Until then I really hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching. This is T-Rex signing off.